An unusual but awesome electric vehicle is coming to the market and everyone's going crazy over it with 1,000 miles on one charge and that's even if you ever need it. This one can be fully powered by the sun and never need a plug. One of many reservation holders and Inside EVs contributor Tom Malogny will be here to share the excitement. Whip out your gift certificates and rewrap your toasters. Elon Musk is having a housewarming party, but this time it's not in California. Toyota, once again, Pinky promises us an electric car, but should we believe them this time? We'll tackle this question in a second. And oh my god, is this a moving Hummer EV prototype with a funny license plate? Well, we'll review the footage. A self-driving tractor has been unveiled, no driver needed, fully autonomous, and this thing can follow you around and understand your gestures better than your dog. And the only treat it needs is electricity. The highly anticipated Audi e-tron GT goes in production for 2021 deliveries and tons of electric pickup truck news from Bollinger, Atlas, and Lordstown Motors. Are you ready for this week's dose of electric car news? I hope you are because we're gonna start right now. Oh, welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Our top story is missing the fourth wheel, but that doesn't seem to bother a lot of people. Aptera has finally launched their 1000 mile electric vehicle. It only has three wheels and it looks absolutely awesome. The deliveries will start next year and they are now taking reservations with just $100 deposit, though the couple of versions that are already sold out. It has four different battery options, starting with the cheapest one, just under $26,000. That one is 25 kilowatt hour battery that will give you 250 mile range. The one with 1000 miles that I've mentioned will have a 100 kilowatt hour battery and will be priced just under $45,000. It will have a few cool options like the level two self-driving capability, a camping kit with an integrated tent, a pet kit with a water bowl and a pet divider to secure the pet safely. But the coolest option that it has is its never charge feature where the vehicle will be self-charged with its solar panels that are located on top of the car and depending on where you live it can charge itself between 16 and 43 miles per day and if that's all the daily driving that you do well you will never have to plug this car in if you remember i have also reported on another brand the lightyear one that's the only other auto manufacturer that i have seen to successfully implement the solar panels into the body of the car but they are still in their prototype developing stage of course i will keep you updated on that one as well back to optera it will come with both front and all-wheel drive versions with the all-wheel drive model going 0 to 60 in just 3.5 seconds and oh yeah by the way they have also recruited sandy Munro, who you can see on this channel at least once per month to advise them on their manufacturing. For more, we turn to the Inside EVs contributor and a pretty big Aptera fan, Tom Malogny. Before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Xpong Motors, China's leading smart EV automaker that just announced its new autonomous driving architecture using the LiDAR. For more, follow Xpong Motors on Facebook using the link in the description of this video. And by Climate Exchange, check out this year's Tesla raffle. You can win a Tesla of your choice. Only 4,000 tickets will be sold, so make sure to get yours using the link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, the money will go towards a great environmental cause. All right, Tom, so I don't know how things are in New Jersey, but here in California and really anywhere I traveled, including Europe and China, I just don't see that many people buying a three-wheeled vehicle. So tell me, you know, who is the target audience for this and why this is having such a big hype? Well, some people must be interested in it because they they got thousands of reservations within a few days of it opening up reservations. I don't have the exact, well, actually, I have the exact figure, but I can't tell you because it's under embargo. Um, but they did have a lot of reservations, so people are interested. By the way, I think I'm going to get one. So there's interest in this vehicle, Alex. It's not going to sell hundreds of thousands, but I think they're going to have enough customers to, to have a nice little business there. 
All right. Well, uh, you know, let's talk about the never charge concept because, you know, we've played with the concept of having uh, solar panels on a car that's self-charging and so forth. That just wasn't going as fast as the other types of technologies. But, you know, it is going and it looks like they're going to be able to get a decent amount of, uh, you know, energy out of it. I mean, we're all in, 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 in the pandemic mode right now. So most people don't drive more than five or even 10 miles a day. So this would be more than enough. Uh, but uh, do you think by the time they're going to uh, start maybe not just delivering, but maybe working on the second version, this can be a thing uh, where our cars won't even need charging stations? Well, you know, uh, I think it's going to always, I won't say always, but for the near future, we'll always have to plug in at some point for most people. But don't forget, most people drive on average 40 miles a day. Aptera says that this vehicle will, in perfect conditions, bright and sunny all day, Southern California, not necessarily here in New Jersey, but um, we'll get 40 to 45 miles a day of solar energy. Now, it's only four to five kilowatt hours, but since this is such an incredibly efficient vehicle, it goes nearly 10 miles per kilowatt hour, then it can get 40 to 45 miles a day, which will cover a lot of people's daily driving needs. All right, and uh, now let's talk about something else, something that you were the first one to notice in this car. Um, tell us what it was and tell us a little bit of maybe possible update and what does it really mean? So I just want to clarify, I wasn't the first one to notice, but in Inside EVs, we have like a backroom chat and Kyle brought it up and said, hey, did you guys see this? So we all kind of gathered around and we're like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Aptera in their promotional video shows a connector about to plug into the vehicle and it's a Tesla connector with a Tesla inlet. Now, you know, no company has used Tesla's charging uh, technology or the connector. Everybody uses here in the US the J1772. In Europe, it's the Menix Type 2 plug. Uh, China has their own thing. But, you know, here, here in the U.S., it's J1772, except Aptera showed in their video a Tesla connector. Now, I followed up and called the CEO, uh, uh, Chris Anthony, to try to clarify this, and he kind of danced around the subject. He didn't want to say they are going to use Tesla's, uh, you know, connector. He didn't say we're not using Tesla's connector. It kind of sounded to me like they're maybe negotiating right now, things haven't finalized, or maybe if they do have a contract, their partner that would be Tesla had told them, don't, you know, we don't want you uh, announcing that yet. We're going to announce that. So it's very interesting. There's still a lot to be learned about this. But for now, you know, there's some, there's definitely smoke there. I don't know if it's fire, but there's definitely smoke. Don't forget to subscribe to Tom's channel. I put the link in the description of this video. Well, it's happening. Elon Musk is moving not to Mars, not yet at least, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll let him tell you. Um, for myself, yes, I, I, I have moved to Texas. Um, we've got the Starship development uh, here in South Texas, where I am right now. We're hopefully gonna uh, do a launch later, later today. Um, and then we've got the big, uh, factory development uh, just outside of Austin. Now, I know a lot of people are making the story out to be about how it's impossible to do business here in California, and there is a lot of truth to it, but bottom line is Elon is moving where he's needed the most right now. It's the Austin factory and the SpaceX Starship development. Just like when he lived at the Fremont factory during the production hell. So I don't really think that this is about the California state income tax, which is the highest in the nation while Texas has none. I think Elon has enough money for the groceries. It kind of got started in the beginning of the pandemic when Elon was fighting with the local county officials to keep his factory open, though I don't think he was on the right side of history at that time, just like he wasn't with this tweet predicting that the pandemic would be over by the end of April. But it doesn't seem like Elon is going to be moving Tesla's headquarters to Texas. It will probably stay put here in Palo Alto, California with their design studio in Hawthorne, California. Though there has been a bunch of Silicon Valley based companies that have been moving to Texas. The latest one being Oracle, the company that I worked for for almost four years before doing this full time. 
And while all of this is happening, Tesla is just about to raise money once again, this time about $5 billion for no particular reason, really. Elon mentioned that this will go towards retiring some of Tesla's debt and increasing the security of the company. Toyota is once again announcing that they will be announcing a launch of their very first electric vehicle. It's going to be an SUV, the first one outside of China where they're pretty much required to be making them. Here's the teaser image that Toyota has released, which looks like it was taken out of a basic Google image search results for a clip art of a car. So thanks, Toyota. Toyota has pretty much refused to make and sell all electric cars, which is a shame because they used to be on the front lines of the electrification with the Prius being one of the icons of the green car movement, but then they stopped and settled with the hybrids. They did recently came up with one of the best plug-in hybrids in a RAV4 Prime, but the deliveries to the United States have been limited. But the biggest news is the report that Toyota's very first electric vehicle will be featuring the industry's first solid state battery that can be charged in just 10 minutes. Toyota's luxury brand Lexus has also announced that they too are going to be coming out with their own all electric SUV. As you can see, their teaser is a little bit more visually pleasing, but I gotta tell you, Lexus has one of the most beautiful concept cars that I've ever seen, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Hyundai has announced that they will be launching the Ioniq 5 sometime next year, though I think a lot of people are getting a little too excited because launching doesn't really mean making and delivering, so they will have to clarify that, but it will be based on a very good looking Concept 45. The expectation is that it will be priced between forty and forty-five thousand dollars with a three hundred mile range. Earlier this year, Hyundai has announced that Ionic is going to be a sub brand for Hyundai, promising three electric vehicles in three years. The original Ionic model has done very well and was pretty popular, but it was very limited in production. And of course, Hyundai Kona EV has been one of the better crossover electric cars in the world. It just got refreshed and I absolutely love it. General Motors has released some video to show off its working and driving prototype of the Hummer EV. I have confirmed it with the GM that it is driving under its own power. And also GM took a bit of a shot at the non-believers with that license plate. I thought it was kind of funny. But honestly, I'm not really sure why people doubted them in the first place. I know they've been misled by Nikola, but GM is a completely different animal. They are a legacy manufacturer that does not have a history of promising something and not delivering, especially when it comes to a model that they have already announced. And I have seen a lot of comments where people say, oh, look, there's a cord running to the car, so it must be fake. But actually, that's how it's done. That's how most prototypes, electric or gas prototypes that they show off to the media and therefore you guys work. And I know a lot of people have been questioning whether or not it's possible to take it from the prototype stage all the way to the production in such a short period of time, which is about a year. But I have visited their headquarters in Detroit back in March and I have seen their state-of-the-art design studio where they can design and test their vehicles virtually, which really does speed up and accelerate the actual development. When I've heard the story that there is an electric tractor that was coming out, I thought it would be super boring, but boy was I wrong. Not only this tractor looks really cool with a horizontal wraparound headlight, it also has a full self-driving capability. And I mean like, no driver at all. Suck on that, Elon. You can program it to do some tasks and it has gesture controls. So you can literally point where you want it to go. And on top of that, it will also follow you around like a puppy. I mean, my neighbor can't even get his dog or the kids to do it. And this is a tractor. And did I mention it is self-driving? I mean, you can literally send it off by itself into the field to do its job. Also, it can serve as a generator. It can be operated remotely via smartphone. It has a frunk and it can send data that it collects with its cameras about your crops or the livestock. It can operate for up to 10 hours. It is an all wheel drive. The price starts at $50,000 and deliveries will start at the end of the next year. Audi has announced that they won't be making the electric tractor, but they are going to production with a highly anticipated 
e-tron gt everyone kind of fell in love with it when they have unveiled their prototype a couple of years ago i was lucky enough to drive it through the streets of los angeles i also absolutely loved it it is based on tycon and this is going to be the first electric car that audi will be building in germany it's expected that it will have about 280 miles of range and it will be priced north of one hundred thousand dollars. now audi has been flaunting this car for a while now it made an appearance in the avengers movie and a super bowl commercial though i don't quite understand why because you can't really make reservations for it even right now while a perfectly good e-tron suv has been on sale for over a year the next three stories are going to be all about the electric pickup trucks and we will start with the lordstown motors their ceo steve burns took their all-electric pickup truck endurance out for a ride but it looks like he forgot something can you tell what it is? That's right, he decided to go naked. Nobody, just the skateboard. But seriously, it's actually a good way to test because you can monitor and change components much easier that way. And it looks like a lot of fun. Now, I have to admit that I thought the Lorestown Motors was a long shot when they announced it earlier this year but now it does look like it will become reality another up-and-coming brand atlas has revealed the pricing and the battery options for its all-electric pickup truck xt the three options will have three four and five hundred mile range with the base version sporting 125 kilowatt hour battery and pricing ranging from 45 to 69 thousand dollars the xt is supposed to go on sale in 2022 this year atlas has been flaunting its battery development advances including its impressive fast charging technology which made me wonder whether or not they are pivoting to more of a platform supplier or staying as a car brand of course the best person to ask would be their ceo mark hanchett are you taking a path of becoming a a, a battery technology uh, company or are you still the goal is to make the truck? So the, the ultimate goal is to make the truck and leverage the technology that we are developing from, say, battery to various other things and implement that not just in the truck. The truck is the, the flagship sort of starting product that we're looking to launch, but then taking that and moving that into other adjacent sort of verticals that fit within our uh, very particular market that we're aiming for, which is very work, heavy duty, sort of job centric uh, uh, solutions. Another electric pickup brand that you probably are more familiar with is Bollinger, and they have unveiled their production intent designs. As you can probably see, there are a few subtle changes, but it is the very first time we get to see it in a different color which is white now it's supposed to go in production next year at the price point of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars with a 200 mile range but who is the audience for this truck and of course as always the best person to ask is their ceo robert bollinger who is your audience now that you're kind of finding out with the reserve are these people who just you know want to take it off road and really really kind of use it and abuse it or are those people who just want to you know cruise down the street with a truck that could right. go off road right, right. are you finding that out yeah, a little we've bit heard from, we've heard from all different sides because uh What's interesting about truck is it's kind of like three different worlds that come together, right? You have the, the utilitarian side where it's a class three truck and can hold 5,000 pounds. You can put boards through the down the side, you can down the middle, um, plywood, all that, that world. And then you have the off road capable truck. You know, you might just want to only take it off road all the time. And then you have the people who might just want it because the way it looks or because it's green or they just want to use as their daily driver. So we have all three of those who have bought the truck and we're, we're talking to them now. Our sales director is, is getting to know everyone. I'm going to be sending a letter out to everybody to thank them, you know? So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's finding those three people that, that we originally were thinking about when we put it together. Well, you're probably wondering, Alex, what all these amazing electric cars that are coming to market? Well, way ahead of you i have put together a video with all of them and if you want to check them out that's the video you can watch next i put the link to it in the description of this video and of course if you're watching me on youtube you can see it up there in that corner all right looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged